1 Timothy 4 verse 12 says, Don't let anyone look down at you because you are young, but be an example to the believers in speech, in conduct, in faith, in love, and in purity. Watch the short video clip and seize the moment for a life-changing experience. Young Lions Gap Year for Christ. Be blessed. Young Lions Gap Year for Christ is a program with a difference. At Young Lions, you will receive training in four areas. At the music school, we teach our students not only the skill of music, but also the art of worship. At the business school, you will receive hands-on training in retail and catering, and a course in leadership and business skills. At the Bible school, you will receive a first-year certificate from an internationally acclaimed Christian university. At the film school, and this is so exciting, you will receive training in camera techniques, drama and script writing. Do not miss out on this amazing opportunity. Remember, it's a business school, a Bible school, a film school and a music school. Be blessed. At Young Lions, we have one goal, and that is to equip you for life. Register now to be part of this life-changing experience. Young Lions 2018. Say with me this morning, Father in heaven, I want a new thing. I want the fresh and the authentic and the original opinion of God to infiltrate and to take over on the inside of me. I'm telling you this week is not going to be the same. It's not going to be the same as last week. You're at the cutting edge, the very cutting edge of destiny. And you better know it. So how is it possible that you have two women, both of them, when they are called upon, when they are identified, when they are chosen, both of them are virgins. And they are beautiful virgins. The fairest of them all. The one is a little bit older than the other, but they are still, both of them, very young. And both of these young ladies or young virgins, as they, as they step into an opportunity, they are from the same generation, but they are not in the same group, so to speak. The first one comes and she steps into the highest level of promotion and success. But she makes a few mistakes and... These mistakes, they compound and it becomes the very cause and the very reason for her to lose a position. When she loses a position, it makes room for the other one. Also a virgin, also beautiful. She has the same opportunity, but there's something different in her life. Only one thing is different. Only one thing that is really significantly different. The second young virgin has someone in her life that loves her more than what her own comfort and her own desires would allow her to take her to. This person is someone who is a true father, who is a true spiritual man, and he does not just support her because she is family or just sees someone he knows. He supports the truth of God more than just her own desires and whims in life. I'm speaking to you about the queen called Vestai, the first one. She was chosen. She was a virgin when she was found. And then she was put into a program because it was the custom in those days when the king gathered all the fair virgins to choose one that should be queen. Then they had to go through a season of preparation. This morning I'm talking to you about three seasons. The season of preparation... And then the season of promotion. And finally the season of victory or overcoming. All of us, wherever you are, you're either finding yourself in a season of preparation or you're in a season where you have already succeeded to some level. The season of success. But there is also a final season. It's the season of victory or overcoming. Where you become an overcomer. And it's not trying to overcome. You get the testimony and you see the results. 
because you're overwhelmed with the favor that God is lavishing upon your life. I am more than blessed. That's what you want to say. I am favored by God. And so here comes Vesta, and she becomes queen. And while she's queen, the king has a great feast. I'm giving you the background from the book of Esther. And the king, by the name of Xerxes, now this guy had a feast for thousands of people. And you know what? This feast lasted six months. And where the people drank out of cups, that every cup was different from the other one. They were all handcrafted cups of gold and silver. Can you imagine? Your name is there. And no one was forced to drink if they didn't want to. Everyone was allowed to determine their own portion. An incredible display of power, but there's no pressure. This man had some royalty stuck right on the inside of him. So he chooses a queen and he puts a royal crown on her head. <laughs> and you know what? Then after the six months is over, he has another feast. He makes a feast just for the palace people and those in the city. He says, everyone, everyone is invited. I mean, it sounds like the heart of God. For God so loved the world. <laughs> I mean, God's kingdom and God's gospel is an inclusive gospel. It is not exclusive. If you ever find yourself in a place where it is exclusive, you, you, you can know you're in the wrong place. And if you're there because you want to be, then you can also know that there's something wrong in your heart. God is an including God. And this gospel is a gospel of inclusion. Anyway, so he includes everyone. But at the end of seven days, while his heart was merry, the Bible says, because of wine. He says, after seven days, at the end of that feast, the second feast, for the ordinary people, the ordinary people in the city, he wanted to show the people in the city and in the palace who's the one that he has honored. Who is the queen? Because she was incredibly beautiful. But you see, her beauty brought her to the palace. But her beauty cannot take her to the throne. you got to have more than just the beauty that brought you and made you to be the virgin that was chosen. She was a virgin when she was chosen and when she was found. She was incredibly beautiful, but she needed something more. And so the king wanted to boast about this woman. That is a display, a radiant expression of the majesty of his glory. So now he, he's calling for Queen Vastai to come. And he sends seven eunuchs with the message. Tell her to come and to come and show her glory and her beauty. You know what she does? She makes a few mistakes. And because of the mistakes that she makes, they compound into one statement. The statement is this. I don't agree with you, my king, and I will show it to you. You see, the big difference between Esther and Vesta, two queens, married to the same king in one life, different times. The one was the queen in power. She lost her power. She lost her position. That made room for the other one to come and present herself, but to be different. Both of them came into a, an experience in their lives where they did not agree. When Mordecai said to Esther, you have to go and appear before the king now because there's great danger for our people, your people. You know what she said? She said, I cannot go. There's a law. There's a law that says if you're not called by the king to appear in the court, the royal court, this law says that if you come without permission, you will be killed unless the king cancels the law, supersedes the law, and shows you favor for whatever reason. So she has good excuse not to obey. So she does not agree with Mordecai. Mordecai must have known about that law. Everybody knew about that law. So here is the king. He has this law surrounding him because he wants to see is there, if there is a law breaker that can enter into a higher place of that law and touch his spirit and release grace to come to that person. So when Mordecai calls upon Esther to go and speak on behalf of God's people, she has a law that hinders her. 
She uses the law to, to excuse herself. Is that right? And not only does she use the law, she says, and by the way, Mordecai, it has been 30 days now and the king has not called for me. So what I'm reading between the lines is that I am no longer <laughs> pleasing to him as I was. The feast of Esther is now long gone. So now she's called upon to show something more than her beauty. To show something more than her favor. She has to present something of the cross. <laughs> she has to live something of the revelation of the kingdom. Which will bring you to a place where you are willing to lay down your life. So she does not agree with Mordecai. And she says, sorry, thank you for... Thank you for the instruction. Thank you for the invitation, but I cannot go there. There's a law that hinders me. And by the way, I'm not favored. So she is very much like Vastai. When Vastai was called upon, not by Mordecai, but by the king to come and show her glory, show her beauty, she said, I don't agree with you. you, you what you want me to do is to become a show horse. You are drunk and you are rude. That's what she's saying between the lines. She makes a few mistakes and it ends up in one statement, I don't agree and I will not come. When she makes this statement and she speaks it to the seven eunuchs, the seven eunuchs go back and they tell the king, they say, she said she's not coming. The first mistake that she made, she thought it was her husband calling her. It was not a husband calling her, it was a king. It was her king who called her. Because he said, let her come and show her beauty with the royal crown. Let her remember where she got the crown. But now she had become so infatuated, so inflated. That was the second mistake. She had forgotten where it all came from. She had forgotten that what was the reason for her appointment. Why she was promoted and elevated to the place of queen. It was not to honor herself. It was to honor the king. It was for the honor of the king that you are being chosen that you are being lavished with royalty <laughs> that you're giving all of this gifts everything he even allowed her to have her own feast for seven days that was the third mistake her third mistake was to surround her with people surround her with people that supported her no matter what irrespective of whether she was right or wrong don't surround you with people that will support you just because of you Surround you with people that have an understanding and a discernment for truth. Like Mordecai. Because when Esther had a good excuse, there's a law that can kill her. Mordecai said, listen, forget about the law. There's already a decree out by Haman, the enemy of the Jews. There's a sword that has already sent to kill you. Don't think you'll be safe in the palace of the king. You and your children, you and your household will die there in the palace. If you don't stand up and you don't respond to the call of God, I love you and I support you, but I love God and I support his truth more. There was someone in her world that was willing to bring God's word. Unafraid, unadulterated. Unafraid, unadulterated, the pure living word of Christ. And when we have a voice like that in our lives, it is not comfortable. It is not nice. We honor those people, but we don't want to be around them. Because there might be a word that you don't want to hear. You may not like what you see, but you may need what you hear. My wife, she told me, her dream husband, in her heart, was a guy that would be tall, dark, and handsome. <laughs> I don't know what you don't understand about the picture. I am not tall. I am not dark. But I'm extremely handsome. Amen. <laughs> What I'm trying to say is, she did not like what she saw, but she needed what I had. She needed what I had. 
In my heart of hearts, I'm a worshiper. You know what? We don't worship because it's the nice thing to do. We worship because it's the needed and the urgent and the transparent thing to do. That's why we worship. Don't look for a husband with shoulders from the east to the west. Look for a husband with a heart for the east and the west. Look for a man. Look for a woman that has something in them that reminds you of eternal things. Hidden on the inside of you in a mystery. Let that woman and let that man be the one that will unravel the mystery. <laughs> the fourth mistake. She did not realize that no matter the chains of season, in every season, even from the season of preparation to the season of success, the season of promotion, no matter what happens, in every season you're going to be tested. She did not realize that she was being tested. Not for her beauty. She was not rejected because of her beauty. She was rejected because she was no longer willing to honor the king. You know what submission is? It's what you will find in Esther when she said, I do not agree, yet I will obey. <laughs> that is submission. Submission is only what it is supposed to be once you don't agree. And when you can say, I don't agree, but I will obey. You are bringing something to the front, to the fore. You are bringing something to the surface. You are bringing something into the presence of the great king that is more than the beauty. All of those virgins, even when Esther was collected, the Bible says a law was decreed. This king had some control over his emotion. He was furious. A flame burned in his heart, but he kept himself back. That is mighty for a king to have that qualities. You know what he did? He had seven eunuchs. He turned his back on the seven eunuchs. He said, you guys do what you do best. Then he had seven wise men. Seven wise men, those that were closest to him in his kingdom. Then he shared with them what happened to him. He said, what do you say? That is wise. When you go through a hardship and you are being offended and you are being despised by the very one that you have honored, the very one you have honored that person and that person despises you. Imagine when you honor someone and you give someone a position, you give someone an opportunity, you give someone support, whatever it is, and that person despises you and turns, you, turns her back on you. Or he's back on you. Then instead of you reacting, so he did not have a reactive spirit. He had a large spirit, man, that came from an incredible, deep, and noble heart. Although he was not, as we would name him, a Christian. But from his life, we see things and we can recognize things that has an application in our own hearts, in our own lives. Is that true? Isn't that why we read the Old Testament is to see ourselves in the lives of those people and take the principles of the New Testament and succeed as those who have succeeded in the old. Come on. So he speaks to the wise man. He says, what must I do? One of them says, listen, she has not only offended you. She has offended all of us. <laughs> then they said the following to the king, let us make a law. You know what the law was? That this queen, Queen Vasti, According to the decree of the king, from this day forward, she is disallowed into your presence forever. He does not divorce her. He does not exterminate her. He does not kill her like other kings have done it. He says, what you have said, queen, I'll make that your, I'll make you that your destiny. I will make that the law. You said you will not come. From this day forward, you'll never come. And they said she was put aside. And his anger subsided. In the second chapter, when he thought about Vastai, the Bible says some of his servants came to me and said, listen, king, we miss a queen. You see, the Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing. It doesn't say he who finds a woman. It's not about the hips and bones. It's about something that is beyond the beauty. But it starts with the beauty in this story, Okay. So yeah, another decree goes out and they say, let through all the provinces of the kingdom of the great king, let all the fair virgins be brought from everywhere, brought into the woman's house. 
and then let them go through the same custom as Vastai did. A whole year they must be purified before they even meet the king. Why did they choose Esther? Because of her beauty. You see, your beauty can bring you into the palace. But it's got to be your character that will take you to the throne. She has to have something in her that is different than all the other ladies have. You know what she did? Because this is the key. <laughs> she had a humble spirit, a teachable spirit that caused her to ask questions and follow instructions. The Bible says she made a connection with the chief eunuch, a man by the name of Hegai. And she did not prepare herself in any way to impress the king. She said to herself, and she said in her heart to her God, I don't have to be beautiful, I only have to be called. I don't have to be good, I have to be called. If you have called me to this place, then you will validate me and you'll open up the door. And then she took nothing to impress the king, only what the eunuch told her she should do. She had a teachable spirit. But you see, Esther was different. Esther said, there is someone who knows the king better than I do. And I'm going to ask him questions, and whatever he instructs me, I'll do that. But for a whole year, let's go to Esther chapter 2, verse 12. Each young woman's turn came to go into King Ahasuerus after she had completed 12 months. Now watch this now. So they had to go through a season of preparation. The first season, the season of preparation. Say with me, season of preparation. Yes. Completed 12 months preparation according to the regulations. So it was a regulation. That's why I know how best I also went through it. According to the regulations for the woman, for thus were the days of their preparation apportioned. Watch now. Six months with oil of myrrh. So the first six months, all you got to do is take the oil of myrrh. Did you know what they used myrrh for in those days and in all biblical times up to the coming of our Lord? The principal ingredient for the holy anointing oil. In other words, the holy anointing oil, which was the instruction given by God to Moses, God said to Moses, this is how you make the holy anointing oil. And you use this oil to anoint and set apart the high priest as well as the entire temple. So when that oil came upon you, you were chosen and you were selected by a divine hand to have the opportunity to enter into the Holy of Holies, so to speak. And to come into the temple itself, which is the house of God. So when she touched herself with myrrh for six months, listen, if you have rubbed yourself with myrrh for a day and a half, you think, well, I'm well myrrhed now. I'm like a VH engine, man. Everything in me myrrhs now. If you were in her shoes, come on now. You're looking for someone intelligent and someone beautiful. You can see she's already beautiful, but how intelligent must she be if she's going to do this for six months all the time? She says, what are you doing? I'm rubbing myself with what? With the oil of myrrh. She says, who told you to do this? How long have you been doing it? I've been doing it for three months now. I say, how long are you still going to do it? She says, another three months. She says, is she lekker? You see, but the king is putting them through this strict ritual, so to speak, custom. Because in that, the eunuchs can discern who is sincere and who is truly submissive? Because you may, not, you may not agree with the program, but are you going to stay with the program? God wanted her to read between the lines and ask some questions about what is the message? Not just what is the fragrance of myrrh. What is the message of the myrrh? So when Jesus was born as a little baby, the wise men came from the east. And they brought gold and they brought frankincense and they brought myrrh and they laid it at his feet. But when Jesus died, there was no gold. There was nothing else except myrrh. And Nicodemus of all people came and he brought a hundred pounds of myrrh and aloes mixed. It was laid at his feet as a baby when he was died as a man, as the son of God. The myrrh was laid upon his body. And they bombed him with the myrrh. You see, the myrrh speaks of the life that you are called to live. A laid down life. An instructed life. Yes, you are beautiful, Esther. But can you join and can you intertwine your beauty 
to an instructed life. Can you take instruction about what is the message of the myrrh? Surely all those women there must have said, well, isn't this a little bit crazy? Isn't this a little bit long? But if they asked the eunuchs, maybe they would have caught the message. And so while she rubbed herself with the myrrh, the oil of myrrh, she touched, she touched the one whose person represents the very essence of myrrh, Jesus Christ. And she somehow knew that I will be called upon later to lay down my life. After the six months with the oil of myrrh, then six months with perfumes and preparations for beautifying women. So if you've gone and you have the foundation of the cross, now comes the reward of the cross. Now comes the riches and the glory of the cross. And now it's all just the nice stuff. And when she goes from the season of preparation and she's chosen, she comes into the season of success, the season of promotion. You see, most people want to be promoted, but you know what people see when they see promotion? They see two things. Normally, people who speak about promotion, who pray about promotion, and who pursue promotion, they see two things. They see a better life, number one. A better life with more benefits. Secondly, they see a strong place with more security. But that's not what God sees when he wants to promote you. That's not what he saw when he promoted Esther from the season of preparation to the season of success and the season of exaltation. You know what God saw? God saw with her promotion, God saw two things. God saw more influence and more purpose. <laughs> more influence, more purpose. That which he saw in her when he met her, when he chose her, when he favored her, he knew there must be more. <laughs> so he set the boundary. He set the laws. He may not have known this, but I'm telling you, because I'm speaking in the spirit. So when she says, I cannot go, the voice, the hand that raised her, the man that protected her, the man that prepared her said to her, I'm not interested in your nice life. I'm interested in your instructed life. Your experience with the cross will prepare you for more of the cross. Did you hear that? Your experience with the cross is going to prepare you for more of the cross. But the more the cross comes into your life, the more the glory will be gushing and flowing out of your life.